one of the things I've started to do with my Twitter account is to tweet out good, non-naive news. Because one of the things that's happening in the world, and there's been half a dozen books on this or more written in the last five years by credible people, is that the distribution of the idea of individual sovereignty and property rights and, and free market economies, etc., out into the rest of the world is making the, the, the non-Western world, is making the non-Western world rich really, really, really fast. So between 2000 and 2012, the rate of absolute poverty in the world fell by half. Half. It was the fastest period of economic development in human history. We beat the UN, we beat the optimistic UN target by three years. Staggering. Um, you know, the, the rates of child mortality in Africa are now lower than they were in Europe in 1950. The fastest growing economies in the world are in sub-Saharan Africa. Many, you know, millions of people, millions of people a month are getting access to this incredible technology that's embodied in cell phones, right? People have access to fresh water like they've never had access before. The child, uh, the, the kids are, kids are uh, getting immunized at a rate that's, that's, unfor that's, that's unprecedented. And, and yet we have this idea that's become rampant in the West that there's something ultimately corrupt about the patriarchal tyranny and that it has to be dismantled right down to its core. And a lot of that's being taught by the activist disciplines in universities. And I just don't get it. It's not acceptable. So they see these hierarchies mm -hmm. and their proposal to f level everything off and to take away the insane power at the very top is equality of outcome. Mm -hmm. This unpro unproven in terms of it's never been... The it's never been done successfully to a utopian... Right. Well, I, and I also don't even think you can do it in principle, because if you accept the proposition, the, the propositions I laid out, which is you have to pursue things of value, and if you pursue things in a, a value in, in a social space, so you do it cooperatively and competitively, you do it with other people, then you're going to produce differential outcome because people will be differently good at it. Yes. Well, it's like, okay, you don't believe that? It's like, okay... Do you listen to random selections of music online or do you do what everyone else does? You go for the one-tenth of one percent of songwriters and you li only listen to them. You only listen to the one, you only read the productions of one-tenth of one percent of writers. You only listen to the podcasts of one-tenth of one percent of podcast br broadcasters. Right? When you watch sports on TV, you only watch the athletic contributions of one-tenth of one percent of athletes. So like, Where's the equality exactly? Where is that in your life? You people who are pushing for equality of outcome. You manifest that in anything you do? You don't. You're unbelievably selective, just like everyone else. And the reason you're selective is because you, there are things that are happening that need to happen or that are entertaining and, and interesting, and you want the best in all of those realms. That's how it works. And there is a best. That's the other thing that's so painful. And that, that actually is painful. You know... One, here's a problem of dispossession, <clears throat> a real problem. One way to not do very well in any hierarchy is to have a low IQ. And so IQ is normally distributed. And if you have an IQ of less than 85, it's hard for you to read well enough to follow instructions. That's about 10% of the population. might even be higher than that. Okay, so given that lack, how are you going to compete? And the answer is, you're not, because low IQ is a good predictor of poverty. Now, they spiral because, you know, if you're, if you, if you're cognitively, if you're, on the, in the, if, you're, if you're less cognitively gifted, then, and you have children, they're going to be in a less enriched environment. These things spiral, but you still have the essential problem. That's the essential problem of the dispossessed. It's like hierarchies are complex tools to attain necessary goals, but they dispossess people. What do we do with the people that they dispossess? The answer is, we don't know. So we have to talk about it constantly to figure out how to solve it, because it's an ongoing problem that transforms, and that's the reason that political dialogue is necessary. And then the danger is, is that the political dialogue will polarize into the radical left, no hierarchies whatsoever, or the radical right, our hierarchy is 100% right at all costs. And so those are the, we have the eternal problem, and those are the two poles that we have to negotiate between.